Welcome back to day three of the seven portals of Yoga Nidra. I'm, my name is Melanie Dawn, and I am here to guide you through the third portal of divine alignment. And this portal is all about who are you and why do you do what you do? Not everything we do, we end up feeling good about and not everything we do, we understand. Sometimes it goes against what we really desire almost like we're attracting or creating the exact opposite of what we long for. This happens when we continue to operate from programming that was stored from our conception to now, without ever experiencing anything new again. The personality that you have created or was created for you is filled with preferences that are rich in suffering. Deep associations to... I like this and I don't like that. Have us running all the time. We are running towards one thing or away from another. Missing the experience of presence and the magic of being. If you can sit with sensation and be completely present, you can relax into the safety of simply being. Not refusing or oppressing anything, just being. Our preferences hold us inside a cage, and they keep us from experiencing anything new, and they keep us from experiencing this moment right here. There are so many times where we'll react and not understand why that was our reaction. We won't even question it sometimes, is this is the way I've always done life. But it's the way that you absorb from your surroundings that this is how life works and it's very limited to just your perception and this perception was created before the age of 12. So if we don't look at our programming we truly are running our lives based on the assumptions of someone who was 12 years old just trying to survive and to receive love. That's our greatest greatest work in this life is to receive love and to not be denied love. And so we'll either self-deny that if we can't handle rejection or we have been rejected too many times. We'll create a program that won't allow us to fully experience love because on the other side of that just means too much pain. Or we can create a program that won't allow us to hear another viewpoint, that our inner dialogue is so negative and so overwhelming that being questioned from an outside source is something that we can't manage, we can't handle, and these cause intense reactions. It can show up in uh, relationships, both intimate and professional or family um, dynamics. It, once you learn to sit back in the seat of observation, that's when we really start to see our programming unfold. And even asking yourself when something is going and going on, and it's important, what am I feeling? And why am I feeling this way? And when was the first time I remember feeling this way? We have a brain that has like from conception to now, uh, especially in the formative years up to 12, is like just hitting the record button. It is just storing programs. And once we have a program stored, if we have a program that a bird makes this sound, or uh, perhaps your first experience with a bird was one that was scary, forever on, you will have a reaction to a bird that is, I don't like that. You won't experience each bird as its own unique experience. It will be in some way clouded by the past experience. And that's what we're working through the practice of Yoga Nidra. And the platform of Yoga Nidra is to unfold all of that, to deconstruct the programming, to be really visual and seen by self. This can be painful. Uh, it can be frustrating because a lot of us, and I'm, I'm included here, want it to be someone else's fault, <laughs> want it to be someone else's problem. And then as you deconstruct the programming, you can see that, oh man, like 
I really played a role in that, whether it was even the, uh, for me, um, intimate relationships were never safe. My childhood was um, rocky and uh, intimate relationships weren't safe. It was always having to be chaos. And the um, my, my parents had a really reactive relationship. Alcohol abuse was there. And there was a constant state of, you are wrong, I am right, and then the change would have to be made. And then love was available there. So my dad would drink, my mom would say, you are wrong, which she's right. And he would say, either I don't care or I'm ready to change. And then that was like the deep love, like the love bombing stage. And so for me, love looked like a lot of love bombing and then sheer chaos and then more love bombing and it was um it was repeated by me it was repeated in the choices of partners that i have uh chosen and even in uh family relationships so this is just one example of what our programming can serve to look like as we age and have our own families and although it doesn't look like um, in my case, it wasn't alcohol that was ever the issue, but there was always a trust issue or um, I always felt like I was being deceived. And um, what I was really working up against was that I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust myself to make the right decisions. I didn't trust myself to listen and to have boundaries. And so I made that everybody else's problem. And this is where divine alignment comes in is when I can really see myself I can choose differently. I can be different. It will be uncomfortable. It will be chaotic. But that is the course of the map taking its new shape. And I hope you enjoy this practice that focuses on who am I and why do I do what I do? Begin your yoga nidra practice by creating a soft, steady, and supportive foundation underneath a lengthened out laying down body. We refer to this shape as the corpse pose, the pose of death, shavasana. It is the beginning and end of each practice and the shape that you remain in for the whole practice. It is important to remain still with your eyes closed and awareness turned inward, all but the sense of hearing, in order to soften the edges of your physical and to descend down into the alpha brain state. We begin practice from a beta brain state, the brain state that is thinking and doing, the one that is always reacting, the one that is watching waiting, predicting, and anticipating a future. And sometimes this can create feelings of anxiousness or waves of depression. When we sit inside this mind too long without moving anything through the physical body, the mind begins to clutter, become fragmented. And our intention and purpose is lost. This is almost what I see as a crown chakra blockage, where we have spent too much energy into what is thought about and too little energy into what is done. Use this opportunity to create a beautiful backdrop of comfort and safety for your physical body. And as your physical body softens into the support that you've created, the potential for healing exists. When we move through rotation of consciousness, we are kinesthetically experiencing our body. We are moving trauma through the physical without even moving the physical but translating awareness to each part. It is a deep, deep healing that occurs every time you are here, every time you soften enough to be here.
and every breath that you take that softens you deeper into a layer of knowing, of observing, and of being. With the palms turned upward so that nothing touches the magic of the palms, squeeze your hands together, creating tension as you breathe in. And then with your exhale, let your fingers drop open, the palms become exposed, and the whole body drops. The inhale brings from the heels upward to the crown as the fingers close in on the palms and the fists are squeezed. And the exhale drops from the crown of the head all the way down to the toes as the hands drop open and tension is released. Continue to squeeze the hands together with your inhale. And let them drop open softly with your exhale. And this is a duality, contraction and expansion. Notice how your body feels when you're squeezing into tension. And how your body feels when you let all of that tension drop away with your exhale. If your eyes are difficult to keep closed, begin to slowly open the lids as though they are the heaviest things that you have ever, ever lifted. Each time, attempting and closing. Until the body believes that they are so heavy that they remain closed without will or effort. Bring awareness to the midline of your body that runs from the crown of your head, the very top of your head, all the way down to the perineum. The space of nothingness between the genitals. And feel each breath rise up from the perineum into the skull of the head, around the brain. And each exhale from the top of the head all the way down the spine and out through the perineum. And in this breath, with awareness present, you are activating the energy channels that run the length of the spine, clearing any blockages, letting go of any stuck energy, and just being present with the two values known as prana and apana. Prana moves upward in energy towards the crown of the head, bringing energy into the body. And apana is releasing any stale, stagnant energy Pressing down through the perineum, absorbed by the earth, ether. Bring awareness into the palms of your hands once again. Without physically changing anything unless there is discomfort present. Begin to feel consciousness drop onto the fingerprint that exists on your thumb, index finger, middle finger, 
ring finger and your smallest finger. And now feel the energetic channels of each fingerprint connect at the center. Maybe you could even visualize if your mind is attuned to visualization. Energetic frequency from each fingerprint to the center where they all join. And as awareness lands there, the energy and intensity increases. And you might even begin to feel some heat or density form. This is you channeling energy, using your body as the conduit it was meant to be. And if you can move energy in this way without physically moving at all, the potential to heal through the somatic awareness of self is present here. In the very center of your palm, with your body so soft, so ready, so slowly dropping into the absorbent nature of alpha brain state. It is here where we place Sankalpa, right into the magic that exists in your palm. Feel the heat of your Sankalpa. I am, I am, I am. As it's transferred back from United Consciousness into your physical nature through the absorbent state of your palm, quietly repeat, quietly place. Send Kalpa right into the palm of both hands. I am, I am, I am. there's any tension that is existing in your hands, see if you can use your exhale to soften. If there's any tension that's existing in the crown of your head, over your face and your jaw and your mouth, use your exhale to soften. If there's any tension that is existing in the shoulders, the need to still hold your weight, Feel like you are doing. Let yourself know that it's okay to soften here. I'm willing to soften. I'm willing to let something else hold me. I'm willing to trust. If there's any tension in your belly and the way you're breathing, would I breathe if I was completely free? And let that breath drop all the way down into your pelvic bowl. Into the oceanic nature that exists there. That with control and masculine energy becomes solidified into ice. Breathe in the soft, nurturing nature of the feminine and welcome back the flow as you let each muscle and bone become heavy, melting, supported, held. Release the whole body into the structure that you have created below you. Release any anxiousness or worry 
that may still be circulating in the mental wisdom. Let yourself know that all of this is welcome here. It is safe to tuck away. It is safe to relax into just being. Any wisdom that's arriving, it's witnessing, anything that would be labeled as angst or anxiety, it's witnessing. No need to change. It relaxes and dissipates. It's welcome. It stays. That's welcome. If you could pick a thought, the most prominent and dominant thought, that exists. Take it from the ethers in the center of the mind and bring it to the forefront into the eyes of awareness. What is this thought that you think? Now add your Senkalpa to this thought. I am, and then let it go. And as we move through rotation of consciousness, this is bringing awareness into the physical, moving through the body as it's programmed in the brain. We begin in the most sensitive heightened area, the palm of the hand, the fingers and thumb, this is how we greet our world. We experience touch and texture. And from the right hand thumb, experience what it's like to touch air. And the second finger, third, fourth, and fifth. Now bring attention and awareness to that air is more than air, that it is energy, and that you are wrapped in an energetic imprint, a biography of energy, as it touches your right wrist, forearm, upper arm. As energy touches the top of your right shoulder, right breast, the sensitive and tickly side of the right side body, right hip, the right leg, from hip to knee and knee to heel. The sole of your foot. Feel the energy touch the sole of your foot. And wrap around each toe, contouring the top of each toe, the knuckle of each toe, and the top of your foot. And now feel as energy rests on the whole right side body. You can feel a dancing, a flowing, Maybe some other sensation that I haven't known. 
Open up to what you're experiencing through your right side body. Now continue to hold the energy of the right side body. And with intention, we bring in with this energy, there's an intention to heal. Any frequency that does not align with my frequency. Where my breath wanders, there is potential for healing. Take three deep breaths into the right side body. And the deeper you breathe, the more possibility for healing there is. Because where the breath touches, healing can occur. Three deep breath into the right side body. And we'll continue to allow the healing to occur through the right side body. We're bringing our awareness, our individual awareness to the left palm. And then bring awareness to the thumb. And feel the temperature of the air as it rests on the thumb. Maybe even sensing if there is weight to gravity. And feeling the energetic biography. All around the thumb. Second finger. Third finger. Fourth finger. And your fifth finger. The whole hand aware that there is energy within, through, and around. And feel energy resting on your left forearm, upper arm, touching the top of your left shoulder. Breast, the heightened sensitive left side body, left hip, left leg, hip to knee, knee to heel, and the sole of your foot. Feeling the energy of where you have walked and the energy of where you are going. And all of that is here inside of the biography, the blueprint of energy. And feel this blueprint touch the tops of each toe. Rest on the knuckle of each toe. Smooth over the top side of your foot. And begin to feel the energetic frequency of your whole left side body. Maybe a color associated to it. Or just a feeling. Or even perhaps nothing. But bring awareness to the whole left side body. And welcome in the frequency of healing with each deep breath. The breath being energetically directed to the left side body. As a scanning tool for healing. 
the deeper the breath, the more thorough the scan. And begin to feel the left side body merge and create union with the right side body. Blurring any boundaries or borders created by the midline. As the two side bodies merge with the neck, throat, skull, and the personality of your face. Entire body awakened with energy. The observer's body is soft. Awareness is awake. With the intention placed into your left hand palm, I am, I am, I am. It begins to flow like a river from the fingers to the palm to the hand whole of the hands, left, right, the whole of the arm, left, right, the whole of your head, neck, upper chest, upper back, mid-belly, mid-back, low belly, low back, the pubic bone to the tailbone, hip socket to hip socket, both legs left, right, the soles of the feet encoded with the sacred knowing, I am I am, I am. Pranamaya Kusha, where the brain is trained to hold awareness. The mind is trained to hold awareness of self. And as you are breathed, it is used as a mind tool to stay anchored here to the present moment. Counting backwards from 70. Seven, zero. Begin to count each breath. There is no rush. Breathe slowly. Challenge your mind to go slowly. Stay aware. I'll call you back when Pranamaya Kusha is complete. Acknowledge any internal frustration, any internal agitation that may exist as you count. And let it be accepted and received through a neutral landscape, neutral body. All emotions and feelings are welcome here. Counting backwards from 70. In Yoga Nidra, we use time as a guide to tether awareness. A time does not exist when the counting ceases. And you drop back into a soft body, 
sacred temple. Manamaya Kosha. In this Manamaya Kosha, we explore the mental body through a series of rapid visuals. These rapid visuals are anchors to our subconscious unconscious. It stores all of our experiences through symbol, through memory of smell, sensation, abstract object. We have the ability to witness how this is stored as we watch where the mind impresses an experience upon a rapid visual. Stay soft. There is nothing for you to do here. You are just simply watching and seeing what comes. If nothing is happening, there is no need to try to make something happen. Everything is happening. The eyes closed bring the inner gaze to the center of the forehead, Chitakacha. Hold your gaze there and see a flower field of brilliant yellow sunflower. The brown faces turn towards the sun. Rapidly turn away and face the dark. Fall over in a field wither and die and see the same field emerge green seedlings begin to pop across the entire landscape green leaves begin to flourish stalks begin to form yellow sunflowers present themselves the sun the sun the sun. See the moon. Follow the waves of the ocean. Feel the magnetic pull of the moon. Drop all the way to the bottom of the ocean. Brilliant pink coral. A school of orange fish. Three circling sharks. Ascend, ascend, ascend. An orca. A whole pod of orcas reach the surface of the water. Spraying water up into the sky. Feel yourself be pulled up towards the moon, relaxing gravity as you float dripping from the water, dripping from the water, dripping from the water. Feel the cool surface of the moon, the texture under your hands, your naked body the temperature. See yourself at the top of a long, dark tunnel. Press yourself forward and begin to slide and spiral for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Physical eyes stay closed, internal eyes awaken. You are in your childhood bedroom. And colors on the wall. How do you feel?
begin to explore your childhood home. The memories of your bedroom, knowing that you are safe. Your body is here in the being. Everything that you are experiencing is stored in cellular memory. You are so safe. Stay soft in your body. Go out into the hall. Move anywhere in the home, the kitchen, the living room, the bathroom. There are so many memories to experience here. Some that we have repressed or denied. Some that we would label happy, loving, and some that we moved away from, refused as an experience in our world, our life. It dejected its attachment to who we've become. Still here in the body if you see it. Close your eyes, the internal eye. And see yourself at the top of a dark slide. Press forward. And drop deeply for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Open your internal gaze and see yourself in a mirror. Look into your eyes. See all the way through your eyes into the knowing that exists behind them. And all of the dialogue that arrives as you see your own face. And see if you can soften your face to receive love. I am, I am, I am. Hold your gaze and repeat your Sankalpa three times. I am, I am, I am. Take your fingertips to the mirror. Touch into the future. Change the energetic biography to a biography of I am healed, I am healed, I am healed, I am whole, I am peaceful, I am exactly where I am supposed to be and who I am supposed to be. Nothing about me that is wrong. There's a preference. That is something that has changed my experience of how I receive love. How I give love. I am. I am. I am. Go of your Sankalpa and feel into your body if there's tension. See if you could relax, soften, sink, just for a moment. Give yourself space to observe what is coming. Bring your physical thumb to your index finger and repeat 
soft. Bring your thumb to your middle finger and repeat ta. Bring your thumb to your ring finger and repeat na. Bring your thumb to your baby finger and repeat ma. Ta, ta, na, ma, sat, na. And you can do this as many times as you'd like to wake the physical body, to bring you back into a space of awareness of knowing where the four walls exist around you, where the floor exists underneath you. You can gently bend the knees and plant the soles of your feet to the earth and rock them back and forth so gently, just acknowledging if there's any aching in the lower back, if this is a welcome release. And take as much time as you need to begin to wake up the body. And as you awake, it is a good practice to take your journal and write on anything that you experienced, whether it was, I'm never going to do this practice again, which means you probably should, or whatever visuals or emotional experiences that arrive for you inside the practice. As you come out, you are still in the very, very potent uh, wave of brain frequency that we know as alpha. And it is an intuitive and truthful space. Take this time to journal and use it wisely. The practice of Yoga Nidra is now complete. Karyom Tat Sat, Karyom Tat Sat, Karyom Tat Sat.